And that got me really thinking about, okay, there's more to life than money and grinding your business day to day, hour to hour. And, you know, it was funny, eight years ago, I trademarked live a life well lived. And I always kind of thought back, you know, in my 20s and my 30s, am I living the life today that I said I was going to, you know, because when you're younger, and you're grinding it, you're like, you're doing it for this big goal, this big purpose. But what's to stop you from living that purpose today? This is Get Unstuck Podcast, a podcast for entrepreneurs who prioritize their life first, business second. I'm Mutita Panmuk, your host who dedicates my life to designing and building a business that supports lifestyle. We will learn together from entrepreneurs around the world how they overcome their life challenges, their business of the cult, and yet still get unstuck from the hamster wheel of burying themselves into their business. Because time is the number one commodity in the world that you cannot get back once it's gone. So let's shorten the learning curve and see how can we prioritize better Let's get unstuck. Hi, Get Unstuck Nation. Today, this episode, I'm very excited to speak with him. So please welcome Jeff Rochelle here to Get Unstuck Radio. So Jeff is a best-selling author, renowned speaker, and also accomplished entrepreneur and authors of his latest book called Fire Yourself First. See, title already interested. So Jeff is an expert in helping business owners break free from daily grind and get ready for this insightful in- conversation that we are going to cover regarding to how to work on the business, not in the business. So please welcome Jeff with us today in Get Unstuck Radio. Hi, Jeff. Oh, hi. It's a pleasure to be here. Looking forward to our conversation. Yeah, I'm so excited because like this is the conversation that I can speak all day every day (laughs) okay before we get into the topic that we want you to cover how you started your entrepreneurial journey right away yeah it was you know i always was an entrepreneur even in school right i would you know mow lawns paint fences deliver flyers i would have five six jobs going at the same time so i always was you know there was a point where i would actually um sell car stereos to people right we lived in a small town and so when i went to the big city I'd buy 20 or 30 and then, you know, resell them in the parking lot of our high school. And so I always had a little hint of it. But of course, society says that that's not really the way you do it. You go to college and you get a degree and then you get a job in a big company. So that's what I did, right? I went, I got a computer science degree. I went to work for, at the time, one of the biggest companies in the world, Xerox. And, you know, they're famous for creating the GUI, which is the precursor of Windows and the Macintosh. Uh, They created the mouse. Like, it was quite a tech farm out there. So it was awesome. I did my years there and then moved to another big corporation. I worked for Fairmont Hotels. I worked for a big insurance company, the Fireman's Fund. And I found that maybe every, I would last about four years. And then after four years, I'd get bored very easily. And um, I would, you know, move to another company or the company would move me out. And so it was actually one of those last moving outs where I was working for a big, huge insurance company. And part of my package was first, I was an executive, so I I got a year salary. So that was a nice cushion, but they also gave you career coaching. And Mm -hmm. what I did was, I took all the Myers-Briggs and all the tests. I did all that. I, they helped me with my uh, resume, um, you know, my interview skills. But then they came back and said, you know, Jeff, when I look at everything and all your personality, you probably shouldn't be working for someone else. You should probably be starting your own business. And I didn't even know that was an option. And so I don't know anything about business or starting a business. So uh, what they suggested is maybe look at a business opportunity. So you basically, it's not like a franchise, but similar. You pay a a certain amount of money. And I paid, I think, $10,000 at the time, which was a lot of money. And I learned how to become an equipment leasing broker. And with that, I just, that was my kind of my own business. I, I did 100 calls a day. And I didn't make one sale for maybe five months. And so I was ready to give up. And then I got that one sale. And that one sale was with a physician. And that physician, I discovered they're very easy to get money. 
So I quickly discovered, okay, it's very, very difficult to get money for a non-doctor, but doctors can get money very easily for their medical equipment. So I'm going to focus on that. So I guess my first tip for any entrepreneurs out there is you follow the easy money. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was less work to get financing for a doctor than a non-physician and I got paid more. So that's a no brainer, right? Like let's not make things complicated here. It's kind of follow the money is kind of my journey all the way through. And that actually evolved into a physician training company that involved into me owning clinics to involve with me having financing company, right? So that's, you know, you never know where it's going to start. It has to start somewhere. Oh, so you didn't show us the industry, but you just follow the money. That's how it started. I did, right? So I learned very quickly, if you provide value to someone and they appreciate that value, they will pay you for it. Mm -hmm. So doctors are busy. They've got a lot of things going. If I'm going to help them get new equipment and finance it very easily so they just have one conversation, then they want to pay me to do that. So it was awesome. And the same thing is when we did our training company, people didn't want to go to 40 different places and find training a bit here or training there. They want to come to one location where they could learn everything they need to learn in one weekend, for example. And so that's what we created and that's what they pay for. And I've been doing that business eight times a year for 17 years. Mm. Wow. Eight, wow. 17 years is a long time. <laughs> so from that time until now, what is your inspiration to write this book then? Why the fire yourself first <laughs> happened? Like how this, how this topic come up then? Yeah, it's a great question. So one of my business I was offered maybe two and a half years ago, I was offered eight figures for it. And that was a good valuation. It was a fair valuation, you know, and I had to think, okay, so if I accept this deal, what would I do? And that got me really thinking about, okay, there's more to life than money and grinding your business day to day, hour to hour. And, you know, it was funny, eight years ago, I trademarked live a life well lived. And I always kind of thought back, you know, in my 20s and in my 30s, am I living the life today that I said I was going to, you know, because when you're younger, and you're grinding it, you're like, you're doing it for this big goal, this big purpose. But what's to stop you from living that purpose today? You know, really nothing. And then I looked at my balance and I, I have this concept called health, wealth, and wellness. And so you've got to have health and wealth is always nice because that it enables you to live the lifestyle that you want. And then wellness is more of how well do you feel mentally, right? Like, are you happy with yourself? Are you happy with your progress? And I think for entrepreneurs, we always, always thinking of the future. It's never good enough where we're at today. It's always, oh, I want to do this. I want to do this next thing. I want to create this. You never actually look back. And when I look back in the last 10 years of what I created, like I went from exponentially increased my net worth and my wealth, and I didn't accept that or celebrate that. And so when I looked at it, I'm like, okay, my goal is this. I want to work 10 days a month in all my six businesses. That's it. Not you know, uh, 20 hours a day like I'm doing now, but 10 days for the month. How am I going to do that? And the first thing is I looked at one of my big operating businesses that I spend the most amount of time in. And when I look at that, I'm like, okay, I need to get time out of that business. So what I looked at doing was actually 11 years ago, I started another business and I had a full-time job and my partner had a full-time job. So we didn't really have time to really be involved with this business. So what we did was we put a team in place, we trained them, we gave them operating procedures, we gave them weekly KPIs or key performance indicator numbers that they need, they're responsible for. They bought the supplies, they ran the practice. And I'm like, okay, if I did that there 11 years ago by accident, like I wasn't smart enough to know this is how you actually set up a business that runs without you. I took that to my operating business. And so I discovered, you know, there's four key tenants, right? Like, first of all, you have to have that big picture bigger than you. What's your purpose? And that's where the 
health, wealth, wellness, and the live a life well lived. Like, so you kind of have to think, what life do you want to be living? And then how can you do that starting today? And of course, if you want a business that's going to generate a huge amount of wealth for you, you've got to have people running it, right? Otherwise, you have a job. You could be a business owner, but if you don't have anyone working for you, you, you have a job because you only have your, uh, your customers to base it on. So you want to hire a team, but a team that's capable of running the business without you, not one that's dependent on you. And so sometimes that's a tough one. And you have to have the numbers, right? You have to know the key numbers that are responsible for growing your company and accurately measuring where it is. And the last thing is the autonomous exit. So you want to kind of exit the business on your terms. So for me, I want to work 10 days a month. I love my business. I want to keep it. And so I have it all run as an ATM. Like I call it an ATM. It just kicks out money, whether I'm there or not. <laughs> I'm only working a couple of days a week or a month. And so it isn't, you know, it's not a lot of effort. I don't do anything I don't love doing in the business. I only do what I absolutely love. And the business makes more money than it ever has. So now I'm, I created a family office and that's kind of where my wealth is and I'm moving everything into there. So I'm in the giving back stage. I'm not a consultant. You can't really work with me. Um, so I created Fire Yourself First, that book that outlines those four steps. So whether you're a brand new entrepreneur or you've been in it for a few years or you're read, you're been in the business for 20 years and you're tired, this is how you can unchain yourself from the business. Four simple steps. And then you have to have the purpose. So it all starts with your big purpose, right? Like, how do you want to live your life for you, your family, your friends? Like, what do you want that to look like? So that's important to have that big guiding light. Oh, there are many key points to start with. Okay. Um, let's talk about the big picture first. Usually when an entrepreneur or the business owner who set this goal, can this goal change once it's Absolutely. set? Absolutely. Yeah, no, that's a great question. And it does, it evolves. You know, some people say, oh, you should have, you know, your core values will never change, you know, honesty, integrity, you know, and that. So those are should never change, but your goal does. When I was earlier, my goal was all about generating wealth, right? Like generating revenue, you know, because there was a time where, yeah, yeah I didn't know if I was going to be able to pay the mortgage, right? Like we've all been in those type of times. COVID was a perfect example that almost wiped out one of my businesses. We went from six figures a month in revenue to $3,000. Well, I can't really survive in that we pivoted that and now it makes double what it made before covid so you always have to be thinking the big picture and this is one of the challenges if you're grinding it too much you think you're doing the best by growing your business but you're actually holding your business back mm. because you need time to think you always need to be looking what's three years out from now like I'm looking at AI, chat GPT, how the internet of things are going, cryptocurrency, blockchain. Like I'm not an expert in any of those things, but I need to be aware of how they could possibly impact my business. If I don't have that day or two a week to think about that, just thinking about it. And then what will happen is the solutions will come to you maybe a week later, a month later. You'll see like, aha, this is what I need to do because you made that time to actually think about it. And that's one of the things my biggest regret is I didn't hire people earlier enough, right? Mm -hmm. Like see, there's a balance where it's like, okay, if I hire this person, they're going to take away from, you know, revenue, right? So this is an expense but you can't look at it as an expense. You have to look at it. This person's freeing your time up. So you have to look at how much you're making now or how much you want to make in two years. So if you want to make $250,000 in two years and that's your goal, then what is that per hour? So you divide 250,000 into 2000 and you come up with your hourly rate, $125 an hour. 
So if I can get anyone to do something for lower than that rate, I'm getting them to do it, right? So if I can hire an EA for $30 an hour or $20 an hour, that's a great investment because now I can do more of the stuff that I'm really good at. So entrepreneurs get stuck in this hamster cage of I'm really good at this and I can do it so easily, but is it the best time? Is it the best value of time, right? Because if you think of a new product line or a service offering, that could make you six, seven figures. But doing your website really well and tweaking it, you know how to do, you're an expert at it, but it's not really the best value for the business. We spoke about this offline. Like when we make decision, no, not we, yeah, when can be we. The daily tasks though could really cause entrepreneurs feel overwhelmed and the times that making decisions on things could make them postpone on not doing the task that move the needles in the business, which already prevent the business structure to set up. So when the business is still at the startup stage, how would you suggest people who like at the very startup stage to consider setting this up and not overwhelm them themselves or not burning out first? Yeah, so when you're bringing on new people and you're doing that first growth, this is my focus, this is what I teach at our, our training programs as well that we do for physicians, is you bring on people that can't do what you do. And I always bring in revenue producing roles first. So the executive assistant is almost one of the last roles, right? Mm -hmm. Like not really, it's, it's there. I'm bringing on salespeople, right? I'm bringing on people who they actually will more than pay for themselves because when you're new, every dollar is critical, right? It's very important. So it's just like when I do my marketing, you know, over the years, I found Google pay-per-click advertising. If I give them a dollar, I get $20 back. That's a good return on my investment. I want the same thing with my first employee or my first few employees. If I'm going to pay them X amount of dollars, I want 10 times that back in revenue. So they need to be selling something. So your first roles as you're starting out need to be revenue producing roles. In my opinion, you can, you can, you can, it's your business. You can do it however you want, but you, you need to get the revenue in because I'll tell you, once you have the money coming in, you, something switches inside you and you become more confident and then you'll start making better decisions. And then the next person may be an assistant to that salesperson so they can sell twice as much. So is that an expense? I don't think so. Like if you bring in a person, you double your revenue, then that's a, not an expense to me. That's an investment. So always invest in people that are going to bring in money first, and then you can start doing your administrative. I out, First thing I outsourced was bookkeeping and accounting and tax. Like I do not want to do that stuff. I know how to do it, right? I work in finance, so I'm perfectly capable of doing that. But why would I want to keep track of my bookkeeping? I don't want to know how. So it's very inexpensive. It was a couple hundred dollars a month. It was very easy. So boom, that's out. Is don't waste time. You may look at a virtual assistant, right? Just to help you with things, maybe a call setter. But again, if that call setter is get, getting booking you business and you're making money, then that's not an expense. That's an investment. Mm, so identify what is the thing that would makes you makes you on the return on investment first. That would be the first role to hire, because yes. when you have more cash at hand, things would change. <laughs> like, yeah, I can see that. It's true though. Like the way that you make decision when you have higher cash in the bank. It's totally different story when it's so tight, right? Absolutely, right. It's a mental thing. It's a mental shift that happens. And you start thinking more opportunistic and bigger picture when you have what I like to call cash confidence, 
Mm. You know, you have this cash or you just have this confidence. I'm like, you know what? I'm good for six months, right? I'm good for nine months. So let's look at what other opportunities we have to grow. And then it gives you the freedom to think about what's next. And how fast do you think the first hire should start it? Well, if it's a new business, you need to make sure that you can afford to pay them, right? So I think my first hire was probably a year into the business. And that just was how it worked for me. Um, I should have done it earlier. Like I always regret not doing it earlier, but it's hard when you're like, oh, this person's X amount of money is going to cost me $3,000, $5,000, $10,000 a month, right? Like how, you know, that's a big expense that comes right out of your pocket, right? Like, so that's, a, you know, $50,000 a year less that you're going to be having. So you can't think about it kind of personally. You have to think about, yeah, but if this person brings in, you know, $250,000 in revenue, that's way better. And then I'm bringing in revenue because usually as the founder, you're still grinding it. You're still working on, you know, developing and building the business. And so you want to bring in a sales. So always be thinking. So when you start your business, you're always thinking who can do this, who not you is what I like to say. So who's going to be doing sales is you eventually your best value is never in sales as the owner of a business. Never. It may start off in sales, but that's not where it is. The bigger picture, the bigger deals are using your sales skills that you learned early on for negotiating bigger deals, joint ventures, partnerships, buying companies. Like you will use those skills. They're important to have. So be comfortable with that. So the ideas of fire yourself would be like break it down to like, piece it, piece it, and then keep removing yourself into like each part of the business until you only do what you want to do in this business at the time that you prefer to do or work on, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like well, I work 10 days a month, but I didn't start off doing that. When I made the commitment, I'm going to work 10 days a month. I went from 30 days to 25 days, right? And a few months later, I made it down to 20 days. So it is an evolution. Some businesses, if you have an established business and everybody's used to making no decisions without you involved, it could take you two or three years to get to your 10 days. Um, but you just have to, you have to make the commitment to do it. It's, you can't not, because as you age and get older, you, <laughs> things will change, right? Your, your mental sharpness will deteriorate. Your health will deteriorate. These are just aging things that happen. They're, they're nothing personal. It's just how the body ages. And so when those things start to happen, that's when you're going to start thinking about, oh, you know what? I should have taken that family vacation to Tuscany, right? It would have, why didn't I, right? So don't hold things today for tomorrow. Do them today. You may not be staying in the 20 bedroom castle in Tuscany, but an Airbnb, right? For a quarter, but at least you're doing the experience with your family. Do not, don't, don't miss that time with your family. You'll never get it back. Ah, I see. So let's go back to the evolution that you mentioned. I would like you to share that the reality of making this work, because I think many people thinking it's easy to like, okay, four hour works week, right? Like many people have read that book. But it also depends on business model as well, like depends on what type of product that you are selling, how you are going to operate, like how many stakeholders or like how many partners are involved, like how many flow is going to deal with and also timeline, etc. Like there are many factors that involve into how you're going to operate in the business and SOP is something that you have to keep adjusting, which is when you just starting, it could feel overwhelmed, especially doing everything on your own. And I also understand that when you do everything by yourself and everything is in your brain, it's like crazily hard when you have to like write everything down. Even you do looms or like something that already like take it out of your brain. It could be still overwhelmed. What would you suggest them to like start systemize? and analyze their current business that, okay, they already have a proven uh, product or services, already have product market fit. Okay, they are know that, okay, right now it's already working, ready to like starting to think about hiring, know that it's going to be a fixed cost in the upcoming future, but they already 
So what would you suggest them to move that needle to firing themselves? <laughs> yeah, so if there's a specific person that you're going to be hiring or specific role, I should say, um, then what you want to do is you actually gave one of my secrets is I video what I'm going to do and I screenshot it. So for example, um, I was you know, when I was hiring an hiring an EA, there's a way I want my email handle. So I am on a Mac, so I use QuickTime and I can do a screen recording. So I'm actually doing the tasks that I want to do and then I save them into a folder with the instructions. And then if you go on that folder, there's probably 30 or 40 things in there. And so for me, if you have screenshot software, if you're doing something on the screen, that's a good way of doing it. If you want to talk just about the, you know, the the topic or your thoughts on it, I think you uh, you do that with a Zoom or whatever and you record it and then you save it. So you have that, right? And it's really good to have. Um, or you could use Loom or another video. So instead of writing down, writing down takes a lot of time. We can transcribe with Otter, right? So I'd rather do the video with me talking, transcribe it, and then we have now all of a sudden we have a written we have the written instructions right with i use otter.ai i'm sure there's lots of other tools out there um, now i have written that's how i create the standard operating procedures now they're written with a link to the video if somebody wants to do that so it's very easy to do but you have to do that you have to when you're on a sales call record it right? Like just put in the background, use voice, voice memo or whatever software you have. Um, just record that conversation so that you can use that as training for your salespeople. This is how I call, right? And then you have 10, 15 down and there you go. Mm -hmm. And then less than review. So that is the easiest way to do SOP. And Absolutely. Then and then organize them later. That's also another part that they're going to do the training and so on. Yep. And you can, that's where you can get someone. Don't, th uh, your first hire doesn't have to be a full time employee. They may come in for hmm. two, three days a week, right? Or one day a week, right? So they don't have to be full time. You want full time as quickly as you can because that's when you have the people that are more committed to you and are going to stay. So if I needed standard operating procedures done for a role, I would probably go on fiverr.com, find somebody, you know, pay them $100, $200, have them take all of my videos, transcribe them all and create a manual for it. Boom, it's done. $100, right? Very inexpensive. Mm, yeah, I want to ask you that. Like first row should be full time or, or like just like by project or something. Oh yeah. So let's ask that question about hiring by project uh hiring with like part-time or full-time how do you think about this combination when i start company? yeah you're gonna do probably both right like i did hire i did use contractors always contractors right so if we're doing video work or uh for example we're creating 100 social media posts from photographs and i need our logo on there and our website on there we're not we, that's not what we do so we don't have anyone in-house so we're going to go to fiverr or we're going to go to one of those um you know uh elance i i can't remember what it's called today but when you know, when i used it, it was called elance now it's called something else uh, my marketing director deals with all that stuff so if it's not a full-time role that you need somebody then don't like I have a mark a full-time marketing coordinator but I don't have a full-time graphic designer I don't have a full-time video editor when oh. we have projects like that we'll just sub them out and then we slowly get to to do that the negative to doing that is that the guy who did or girl who did an awesome job three months ago now is not available has got a full-time job somewhere so it's very inconsistent and you spend a lot of time finding people over and over and over again so if it was something that all of a sudden we really need to do a lot of social media posts and it's a 20 hour a week 30 hour then i'll bring someone on i also don't like people who are working for someone else so when i can do it i want to hire them full time i don't want them distracted with other work a side gig or anything i want them totally committed to me because that's when you get the over and above so in that case anyone who listening to this you have to know how long each task normally takes to finish as well like in general i think that's also important but 
also if they are expert in that field they maybe takes shorter time to finish things like this is already in particular but that's that's how they do it for you and you have no need to worry about it because you already outsourced them to do it for you right yeah mm. and yeah and you may could look at doing outsourcing to an agency right there are ea agencies for example and marketing agencies who have a team of people and so you always deal with the same person but the person doing the work could be different you'll pay more for that Right. So when you're bootstrapping and every penny is important, you may kind of do the fiver, you know, and hire these people one on one for yourself. But you want that off your plate as soon as you can. Right. So that first employee that you hire, they're going to be doing that job. Right. Hiring to help them. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I want to this is didn't exist 20 years ago was, you know, chat GPT. Uh -huh. Right. We yeah, we all use it every day in our jobs. So now that really, if ChatGPT can do it, get them to get it to do it, right? I don't know what it is, but uh, just be careful of the accuracy, right? Mm. Because sometimes it makes very uh, official sounding, you know, responses that sound like they're correct, but they're actually not factually correct, right? Mm. So there is, that's in its infancy, but for some things like, hey, create a marketing outline to create a sales strategy to hit this new industry or this new resource or this company, it'll do stuff like that. So, you know, to help your sale, your salespeople should be using it, right? Your marketing people should be using it and you should probably be using it as well. Yeah, so you're already in a business like, more than two decades <laughs> you are i didn't i didn't mean to say that this long like that but <laughs> my question is actually like your life goal like your lifestyle goal or like okay let me put it this way the way that you you plan your life first and then build your business around your life currently from 20 years ago and until now, have it been different? I think the core of a business is the same. You have to provide a service or a product that people find of value. What that product and service may change, but it's a product or service. And you have to make it easy for people. And people will write a check for it, right? You got check writers. There's many people that say, oh, that's the greatest idea ever, but they don't want to put their money where their mouth is. Those are not your customers, right? The customers are the people that do that. So that's that hasn't changed. People haven't changed. Employees haven't changed. Maybe how they do their sales role or their marketing role and that they're using you know, they're not using MySpace, they're using Facebook, right? May have changed over those decades, but people are people, right? You have to treat them with respect. You have to treat them with empathy. You have to think about them as well, right? And what they want to achieve. So that's why I'm always asking, what is your five-year goal? What is your 10-year goal? Because if it's, oh, I want to start my own company and do this, I don't want to hire that person because I'm the entrepreneur, not you. There are lots of people who never want to start a business because it's so stressful. My my wife is a nurse and she's like, I can't believe you do what you do because I could not handle the stress. And I'm like, me, you're the one in the operating room in emergency situation with gunshot people coming in. I couldn't handle that. Right. So it's all relative. Like what? But I just find it easy. Right. Business is what I know. I'll tell you my other secret is this. I've read six books a month for 20 years. Six books, books a month? That's right. A and lot. I don't wow. speed them up and I'm not a speed reader. I'm too old for that. So I just do it the regular way. So I know they're speed reading and you can do stuff. I don't do that. I just read them. So when I have a problem, that's how I learn, right? And now we have podcasts. We never had podcasts 20 years ago. We had books on tape and literally a cassette tape. But now you have a lot more resources. So if you want to learn how to hire someone, well, you can go to my website, fireyourselffirst.com, and I have a free uh, downloadable 11-step hiring guide. So it'll help you hire your first person. Um, you would go and search podcasts and search ebooks and search the books that are the leaders in that and then learn from that. So when I wanted to learn how to hire people, I read about 12 books. I attended conferences. I did webinars. I wanted to be the best hiring person. Now, remember this, the biggest expense on any balance on any income statement for a business is people payroll right so make sure you allocate enough time and energy of yourself don't minimize this this is your biggest expense you make money by charging more and 
having less expenses. So you want to make sure your exp biggest expense people, you know how to hire people, you know what to look for, right? So especially if this is your new thing. And so if that's your agenda, then I want you to consume as much content as you can on hiring people. Get those little tips here and there so that you can develop your own personalized one that feels authentic for you. Because how someone does something, I want that to inspire you to create your own version of that. Because nobody's lived your life, just you. So you, you grew up a certain way in a certain place and had certain family values. Everyone's different. So you need all that will play a role in how you hire people, how you do sales how you run your business. So wow. I always, the, the solutions are all out there. Don't be lazy. <laughs> but here's the thing. Could it be overwhelming though? Because yeah, it's one many. topic at a time, one topic at a time. Ah. So if it's hiring, just do hiring. You know, don't, you don't do lose your day job, which is sales, right? You're always selling. You're always, you know, positioning everything, following up, making those phone calls. That's another thing that I that has gone back and forth. It was all about phone before, right? Or in person, if that's your business model. And it's not about email, right? You can email, but you want to get, do not hesitate to phone people up, right? Or text them or, you know, and texting is similar, but the voice to voice, that's really where the big, you know, um, uh, the connections are made. Mm yeah another thing though i find that do you remember the beginning of our conversation today you mentioned that okay when we when we see some issue and we tangle it and then like the day later or like a week later we we know that okay this is something that we are going to take take care of like the decision making process isn't happen as promptly and I find that decision making process is the most time consuming things somehow because we we have to make decision everything on everything like right decide on picking this or not like everything is making decision right especially in the business so how would you suggest on prioritization or making decision on daily basis for entrepreneurs great question i was just talking to a colleague of mine yesterday about this oh. and uh because you know she said to me you know jeff you have this filter where you can make decisions and execute very quickly and it is okay i work 10 days a month if i what decision will i make based on that so what's important is you have some really core filters and she goes yeah, for two years you haven't wavered on that like i will not return a call on a friday i don't do meetings on fridays right i don't it's not going to happen if your only opening for a podcast interview was on friday then we wouldn't have the interview like it's a non-negotiable it doesn't matter how big your audience is or anything else. It's one of the core values that I made, and it's a filter that I use when I'm making a decision. And so if I'm making a business decision, is this good for both of us? And I'm going back to probably, I think one of the best business books ever is The Five Habits of a highly effective people by Stephen Covey, right? Is this a win-win for both of us, right? So if it's a win-win, that's good. But if it's a win-lose, so maybe it's a win-win now, but in six months ago, it's a win-lose for me, then I'm not going to do it. Like I want to know for, you know, forever, is this going to be a win-win for both of us? And I also have dollar amount parameters. So if someone wants to meet for a joint venture, if we're not talking $10 million, I'm not interested. I'm just not. It's just at the level where I'm at right now that if you're talking, oh, we want to do a joint venture and it's $50,000 a year for me, I'm like, yeah, I have no interest in that. Boom, filter out, moving to the next thing. So have your filters of where you want. Now, if this, if this person wants to have lunch and that's taking time out of my time, but the potential relationship could be $50 million in the future, I'm doing it. Like I've gone for lunch and invested in apartment buildings just over lunch, got early in before it went to the public, you know, so there is an advantage of having that free time because now you can meet with people, you can have conversations you never had time to do before. And so you really have criteria in, in filters, right? So these internal filters of what your business, so what's your business looking to do? Are you looking to triple your revenue in the next 
you know, 18 months. So if you're going to do that, will making this decision, taking this call, meeting this person, get me to that? Yes or no, right? And so probably have three goals that you have for your business for the next 12 to 18 months and really base every decision. Is it going to get me there? Yes or no? If it's not, then no. I would love to meet with this person. You know, I know of them, but it's not actually going to get me to my triple my sales goal. So I just will say thanks, but no thanks. Because so, your time is valuable. You don't have much time. It's not infinite supply. So you yeah. have to really focus your time. And you cannot come back as well once the time is gone. Exactly. Yeah, right? we don't have time machine yet. <laughs> no. Yeah. So clarity and goals is so important that you have to pin that very clear. And once you reach the goal, then you set another goal with clarity again. Yeah, mm -hmm. don't you always want to make money, right? You want to generate revenue, but not all revenue is equal. Some revenue will cost you more than it's worth, right? It's always like, you know, fire your bad customers. If you don't like working with someone, then don't work with them, right? This is your business. You can do what you want, right? So this isn't like when you're working for someone else, you have to deal with a customer because that's your job, even though you hated dealing with them. This is not the way it is anymore. There may be a cost to that or a consequence to that, but rarely is it a negative consequence in the big picture in the future. Mm. So, Jeff, in case anyone want to follow you, where can they follow you then? Uh, the easiest thing is to go to my fireyourselffirst.com website. And so you can pick up the book if you're interested in those four steps. Very easy to read and I have tons of downloads. So if you're not sure what your big picture purpose is, we have a clarity map that you can download and it'll help you go through the process of thinking what you really want to live, the life that you wanted to live. If you're looking at hiring someone, there's an 11-step hiring guide in there, plus the book. One of the biggest sections of the book is actually hiring. It's the most difficult part of a business, I'll tell you right now. It's more difficult than finding customers. The most difficult part of a business is when you hire someone that they come batteries included, ready to work, right? And so it's a tough process, and that's why I have this 11-step process on doing that. Um, so you can get more information about the book. I also have a weekly Friday email. And you can subscribe to that. And as I mentioned, I read six books a month. So often I'll take the highlights of a book and how it can impact and make an entrepreneur's life easier. So all of that you can get at fireyourselffirst.com. And if you want the Friday emails, fireyourselffirst.com slash Friday. And on the page, if you go to the very bottom, you'll see my LinkedIn, my Facebook, and you can connect with me. LinkedIn is probably the best. I don't use Facebook and the other ones as often as I probably should. Okay, absolutely. So I will make sure that everything will be shown in the description below as well as the show notes. So please visit and grab the book. I'm sure that you get the tons of value from there. So thank you, Jeff, for joining Get and Stock Radio today. Yeah, it was awesome speaking with you and hopefully I helped you with some value. I appreciate you so much. Thank you, I too. Good day. I hope this episode inspires you wherever you are in your entrepreneurial journey so that you can have your business that supports your lifestyle. Get a show note at getunstuckmethod.com slash podcast. Review what we have learned together today and start implementing right now. See it by yourself. The result of your consistent action are worth it. You deserve the freedom to enjoy your life. Until the next episode, Let's get unstuck.